everyone, Adam here, so Wizard Podcast. Got another review for you today. Once again, big thank you to the fine folks over at Amazon for sending us another original screening series. Another original series, they have screeners of it, as I jumble all my sentences together and not make any sense. This one is called Paper Girls. I do believe it's based on a comic or a graphic novel. Not exactly sure on the source, never read it, no real familiarity with it. But the concept of a group of four girls who are delivering newspapers early in the morning, i.e. Paper Girls, uh, get stuck in a time travel paradox. Uh, to, they get involved in time travel accidentally, and things just go crazier and crazier for them, and they end up in a war that's taking place not just in places but through time. The concept sounded awesome. It sounded something right up my alley. It sounded something right up the So Wizard audience alley. So I was super excited to get into this one. Uh, there was a whole messed up back and forth trying to get the actual screeners to work. There were some technical issues, which doesn't have any bearing. It was just to explain the buildup of getting to being able to watch the show and then sitting down and just kind of being underwhelmed. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Amazon, but that's just what the show is. It's just underwhelming across the board. That is the best word for it. It's not objectively bad. It's not terrible. It's just there. It's it's the definition of a two and a half out of five. It's completely middle of the road. It's completely mediocre. And I was trying while I watched it to not make Stranger Things comparisons because you're following a group of kids, you know, 10, 12 years old or something like that, stuck in situations way beyond their control, way beyond their comprehension, and they have to rise to the occasion. I really like these kind of stories. I mean, Stranger Things obviously nailed it. It's, it's essentially a perfect show. It's fantastic. Uh, this is something else that Stephen King, one of my favorite authors, is very good at, is putting kids in situations they have no business being in, but because of the adaptability and ingenuity of a child, they can come through. I mean, just look at it as one example. So this was something that Everything on paper checked, all of my boxes. I should have loved this show, and I wanted to, and I stuck with it, and I was bored after the first episode and went and walked away from my screen, came back to try number two, and again was like, it's, it's just not there. It's not clicking. Walked away, came back, walked away, came back. I watched four and a half out of the eight episodes when I only intended on watching two before doing this review just waiting for it to click, waiting for it to catch up, and maybe they really stick the ending, like the Obi-Wan show could have been a little bit better, but those last two episodes really did it for me. It shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to watch eight hours of a story to enjoy two of them. And I didn't even get that far in Paper Girl, so I can't even definitively say that those last two hours are really going to do it. But after four and a half hours in, I had to tap out. I just... I went and did something else with every intention of coming back and finishing this the season. Uh, I don't know if it's the series. It might be if everyone agrees with my reaction to it. And I just had no interest. I put it on for about three minutes and just moved on to something else. There's there's too much out there that's done better. There's too much out there that deserve, deserves your attention to have to just sit and put something on for the sake of putting it on. Let's break it down a little bit. The story is interesting, the, the very concept, but it doesn't really ever feel like there's stakes. Aside from the main four girls wanting to get back to their timeline and then do they, don't they? There's really not many stakes. There's some introduced early in the season, but then they don't touch on it for a couple hours. Watching these like in the, the binging format of episode, 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 it's hard to remember where one begins and one ends because there's no cliffhangers. There's no feeling of peril. There's nothing to grab you and keep you there. And then it's the 80s into our present day, somewhere around right now. Maybe it was 2019. They don't talk about COVID a whole lot, which thankfully. But then there's also, I guess, mild spoilers for just this part. So if you're still interested in Paper Girls, just tune out for like 60 seconds. But... There's tech that we don't have. It's just this giant Gundam kind of mech robot thing that they end up piloting and using that to travel through time, but then they go back to 1999, and it just seemed convoluted for the sake of being convoluted with the explanation of, well, it's time travel, it's confusing. No, you could do a good job telling your story even if it's not based in reality. That's kind of a lazy excuse. 
Uh, to further the Stranger Things comparisons, because set in the 80s, obviously, it tries to hit you with the music and it tries to have those pop culture moments that are kind of ingrained in our pop culture. Like, obviously, calls to Star Wars and things is an easy way to go in the early 80s. Good for Stranger Things. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons was kind of at its height then. All of these things. And Paper Girls just doesn't get there. Luckily, it doesn't rehash these same ones we've seen where they're trying to say, hey, you liked it in this, like it in our thing. They're not doing that, which is good, because that would be a bad thing, which is why this is just the definition of mediocre, as I said. The the soundtrack never really grabs you. They don't have a, a personal character connection to any one song. I mean, they mention a musical artist by name, but it's just kind of a throwaway joke. I, I feel like most of their jokes were created and shoved into the episode to give reason for a bizarre title to the episode. I'm not even sure if people are watching episodes based on titles anymore. I mean, as far as I'm concerned in the streaming world, it could be called episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four, because nobody's taking the time to look at the thing, read the listing. And if you're watching a series and you liked one and two, you're going to watch number three regardless of what it's called. So I don't know why they went out of the way to do those jokes, but it just kind of felt forced. And again, never really landed. It's never actually funny. It's never peril. The sci-fi elements are never all that interesting. None of this is something you haven't seen before. As far as the cast goes, they seem reasonably talented. Um, Cameron Jones, Sophia Rosinski, Riley Leigh Nellett, Nellett, and Fina Straza. They're, once again, fine. Very middle of the road for the most part. The standout star to me is Cameron Jones, who plays Tiffany Quicklin, Quilkin, She's the brainy kid because you always need one when you're doing something like time travel and going into the future so that they can pick up an iPhone and understand how to use it and be fascinated by the Internet, this and that, which kind of brings me to another tangent. Uh, while everything was very middle of the road, these jokes on it, someone from the 80s seeing the technology of today, we've heard them. They've been done. Either don't do them or think of a new take. We don't need to talk about how the internet has all the information in the world and there's a lot of crap on there and people waste their time with it. We just don't need to hear these same hack jokes anymore. Let them go. The people really don't seem to have a hard time adapting to the new world. No one's really having a meltdown. Even... Um, one of the main characters runs into their older self. Actually, that becomes a thing where they seek themselves out or family members or whatever. Uh, sorry if that's minor spoilers again, but it's just not captivating. It's not interesting, and it doesn't feel genuine. The effects and stuff are okay. Um, once again, mild spoiler warning. It's the same one as the first spoiler warning, or it's building on that. So if you listen to that, you're fine for this, and if you want to skip it, skip it, whatever. I don't even think there's anything to spoil because there's really just not much to enjoy here, but some of the CG just looked undone, but not like it was actually undone for the screeners for The Boys Season 3 that I had, which still blew my mind. They just aren't great. So, sorry, Paper Girls. Sorry for anyone who's excited for it. It's just mediocrity in the show of an eight-episode series. I can't see this getting a second season. I don't know if it ends on a cliffhanger, and I'm honestly not that interested in finding out because it was just kind of there. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, thank you to the people at Amazon for sending us. Sorry this one didn't go your way. Some do, some don't. That's just the nature of entertainment. Uh, please like and subscribe. We have a lot more Amazon coverage. Uh, August is filled with things. A lot more interviews, movie reviews, comic reviews. we got con coverage coming up. If you're in the New England area, there's Terrific Con uh, this weekend, uh, the last weekend in July. I'm totally blanking on the dates. Sorry, there's so much going on. But hit the like, hit the subscribe, the bell, whatever these things are. You're not going to want to miss out. Speaking of not wanting to miss out, make sure you listen to So Wizard Podcast every single week wherever you get your podcasts. SoWizardPodcast.com is your resource for reviews. Uh, recommendations, videos, merchandise, and more. So as your podcast can also be found on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get multiple monthly bonus shows, uh, audio and video, so definitely check that out. We love hearing feedback. Drop something in the comments, leave us something on social media. Are you going to watch Paper Girls? Did this review change your opinion one way or the other? If you do watch Paper Girls and you disagree, let me know why. Let me know what I missed. I would love to find another show that I love. If you do watch it and you agree with me, then 
great. I guess you could validate me in a way if you wanted to, but we can get into it if you want to. All the accounts are in the show notes and after the video. And on a more personal note, a good friend and I have an ongoing comedy comic series. It's called Social Studies. It's uh, kind of a slice of life coming of age story about a group of friends going through high school, dealing with all the drama and sanity of that, kind of figuring out who they are, kind of figuring out what they want to be in this world. Uh, we do it all through the prism of the 90s cartoons that we grew up on, inspired us, and the cartoons that we still love. So you can check that at socialstudiescomic.com or on Comixology, including Comixology Unlimited. Thanks.